So the elites have done very, very interesting things. Some have created, one, for example, created a wiki for her department. So it's basically the departmental wiki site of all the syllabi for all the courses and tests and everything like that. Um, we've had the, the leads in the College of Music <coughs> just did a video and a needs assessment of all the faculty and all the grad students in the College of Music, and they're going to create something out of the feedback from it. So the leads have a lot of fun, and they we, we guide them. I mean, we don't let them get too far off, board, off um, because we don't. We have to watch their time pretty carefully. But um, the leads get to have a leadership experience, and they actually gain a lot from that. And um, the the feedback on the program is extraordinarily good, and also from the faculty. In fact, I had a faculty member yesterday tell me that he'd had a call from a former lead to tell him that he that they really need to have a lead in the department because it's been such a good experience for him as a faculty member in his own career right now. So that, that was kind of fun to have somebody call up and tell a chair that. Um, so that's the leads. The Tiger STEM piece, this is where we are working on what is now a $10 million grant um, we're at the end of 10 million with a six university consortium that is called the Center for the Integration of Research on Teaching and Learning. And um, we have enough money as a network to actually continue one more year on this on the same money. So we're funded through December 31st. And this is the money we're going to use to do some TAR projects. So if any of you have grad students who would like to do teaching as research projects, um, we've got a little bit of funding to support those um, this coming year. We've also got, as I said earlier, a little bit of funding for um, course redesign projects or course design projects on college teaching. Yeah, uh, I've not been quite clear on how one um, applies for that funding, either yes. as a faculty member or a grad student. Just email me. Okay, so you should be sending an application. Yeah. If you want to, if you want to do it, you're approved. Okay. <laughs> and Laura, what's, when you say a small amount of money for a graduate that student for a TAR project, what, what is <laughs> um, Our TAR projects, what we wrote into the budget is about, depending on how how we're going to cut the money for the students, we've got about sixteen thousand total in student money. And so it kind of depends on the project. We don't we don't really say you get this much money for this project because the projects vary so much. Um, so I'm I'm, I'm going to leave it kind of open. So is the money um, intended to be um, 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 support for the graduate student, or is it is it like money to pay for videotape equipment or, or you know experimental costs or travel? Um, or it's we just give the student the equivalent of a stipend. Mm -hmm. So it, you know there's no tuition remission or anything. Um, and the the least amount it will be is thirteen fifty. I mean one thousand three hundred fifty, and the most it'll be is two thousand five hundred, depending on how we split it. So it's it's just enough to do what Cyril considers a teaching as research project. It's not like enough to do your masters or your right. you know something or to live on or anything. So it's kind mm -hmm. of a it's kind of an extra project. We've got um, three in progress right now that are going pretty well one in geography and two in astronomy. So um, so that's what we've got. And we're, interest, we're, we're going to need people. And um, basically what I've done is called up chairs and said, have you got anybody that might be interested in doing this? And then they hook me up with somebody and we kind of do it efficiently. <laughs> that's the way we do it. Um, so with that said, I'm going to let PJ talk. talking about CERTLE and all of this good stuff. So there are several things. Laura brought up this CERTLE website, which is alternately our baby or our evil minion, uh, depending on how the project is going. So one of the uh, ideas behind CERTLE is to create an online cross-nation, cross-planet network. So the 
portal, which is what you're looking at here, is meant to be one of the points through which people will be involved in that network. Um, it's If any of you are interested, since I'm on the development team, it's a Drupal-backed uh, MySQL database dynamic website. Sounds cool. <laughs> like I said, if anybody cared, I'm sure most of you don't. Um, the biggest thing for most of this is this caption that says the Cernal Cafe. Underneath that is where we're trying to put together sort of these active things. So there's the capacity for people to chat online. So if everybody was logged into the site, the names will show up. In fact, why don't I just go ahead? I wrote down my password since I'm not using my computer. <laughs> And then I can do all kinds of fun things to the site since I'm an administrator. I can break it right before your eyes. <laughs> you want to break it, dude. Depends on how I'm feeling so on the given day. While PJ's fighting that, I'll tell you what CERTL is. So CERTL is six institutions that have this grant from NSF to develop a network around professional development for graduate students in STEM. And what, they, what I think their ultimate goal is 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 to become the online professional development site for STEM in the nation. For and, graduate students. Huh? For graduate students. For graduate students and postdocs. They've, they've started adding and postdocs. And they say that their goal is to improve undergrad ed. Right. Yeah. And I, the, the philosophy behind it, which I think is uh, fascinating, is to really affect transformation at the university level, best to work with faculty who haven't been polluted yet. Um, so to work on faculty of the future is to become, so it's a long haul play, but yeah. it's valuable. It's a very long haul idea. It's also <laughs> going to require that we will eventually expand beyond the six institutions that we presently have. In fact, the next potential round is potentially to expand out to 25 institutions if we get that grant funding. So you stand up so you can see. So if you came in here and logged on to this site, you can see it will list the people that are currently logged on. There's not many. And there is the capacity then to go in and say, oh, I'm interested in chatting with Carrie or Will, clicking on their name, going and dropping them a message. He's going, hey, you know, can you tell me about? So that's one of the interactive features that we've got built into the thing. I won't uh, actually do that right now because I happen to know that Will just had a son and he's just dropping in quickly to do a few things before he goes away for several weeks, so don't want to bother them. <laughs> That's why they're all online. Um, the people that go in here, CERTL also has an Illuminate room, which is a interactive site where people can go in and teach virtual online classrooms, hold discussions, face-to-face uh, -face meetings, and things like that. I found Illuminate, just for the record, remarkably functional, and I'm kind of cynical about these things. And most things. Yeah, and if any of, if any of you want to try it, we own a subscription. So we do. Yeah, the GTP I mean, the also GTP has does. an Illuminate subscription. Yeah. So if anybody wants to try it, we've got it. Great. Can you give a quick tour of that, PJ? Do you mind just like hopping out and show people? So you, can, you could have anywhere between you know just two people to have a conference call there, or a class of thirty people. Yes, do you have a our site with Marjorie? If it's not easy to do, don't bother. Um, I've got our Illuminate room bookmarked on our website, so I just have to, well, actually, I don't know that I can do that. Do you know your password into our website? Yeah, I do. <laughs> the, the reason, I mean, I've, so one thing that's happened is, is, you know, I've given online talks through that way to classes, and, you know, it's kind of nice. It's not, it, it's not as good as being in a room with folks, mm -hmm. and it's not as good as a video chat. Um, but you can't have a video chat with more than four people, really, um, even if you wanted to. Um, and so this is a nice way to do this mix. And you can have people interrupt. You can switch ownership of who's in oh. charge, what's um, directing things. You can have people raise hands, type um, things in. So it's it's some functional online space. Um, it, it's got its limitations. I don't know what, Stephanie, do you do work with Illuminate? Uh, Give a, a web, no, a yeah. See, the problem with all my passwords is if I got them all committed to the memory in my computer, so I don't remember any of them anymore. <laughs> 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 
Oh, right. Well, I know how to do competitors. I can ship. I can get in. Deals well with the company. Oh, you got it. Put Mark somewhere else. Well, I thought I didn't. More so, more so than WebEx. One of the things that we actually did once we started working with the CERTL network, I'll just explain this, is we rebuilt the graduate teacher program website to also be a dynamic website so that it'll run on RSS feeds, it'll link to Twitter and things like that as another means to advertise our workshops and what's going on. And the CERTL website has the same thing. So I've got our Illuminate logins embedded in our website as long as we can actually get into the site. <laughs> And that sort of thing. So, so those are things, and that's another thing that we would be able to give people. We could establish logins for people for our website for the use of the things like that. And those are people that are involved with the CERTL project. We can also use that Illuminate room when it's not booked, and there's a calendar there that shows when the room's being used for the different functions and things like that. And another thing that is going on in CERTL is each semester they teach. Right now it's roughly two, sometimes it's been three online courses that we can put several of our grad students in as being you know, core members of the CERTL network in their things like uh, the college classroom, using technology in the classroom, diversity in the college classroom, um, to list out some of the courses that CERTL is presently teaching. And one of the other hopes that CERTL has is to, we did a survey of classes, workshops, and events that are available on a lot of the network campuses, and they eventually hope to create specific courses <laughs> that fill in gaps. Do you know your password for Illuminate? I'm uh, there, but we still have to have a password. Yeah, it's not credit card. We don't have yeah, to you shouldn't anyway. have You actually shouldn't have to have a password if you have the right web address. Um, that's what the purposes of the web addresses are. <laughs> but I do have, uh, and I do also have that, so we have web addresses for Illuminate that it, you just send them. If you want to be a participant, just click on this link. If you're a moderator, click on this link. You can log straight in, and then you can run the rooms and stuff like that. But I will agree, it's nice. It has um, the night. One of the nice things about Illuminate is it's got voice over IP that works quite nicely, and it also has the ability to work with webcams, so you can see up to six people at one time, and that's a feature that you can either have or turn off as you need for various functions or situations. I found it very functional, I, you know, in terms of that. Like in a seminar like this, if we were all distributed, you don't need more than two or three webcams and you turn off and whoever then is speaking clicks on, all right, now I've got the webcam, much like um, Ed is doing here somewhat more manually. Um, and uh, so I, I found it, you know, I'm not a huge fan of these online spaces because you don't get the coffee room chat or the back channel conversations going on. but. Uh, as far as these go, I was really pleased with it. Yes, I don't think it's under your email address. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's not. So, the and also, for, just so everybody knows, with Illuminate, one last thing, we have, um, for the GTP, we have 20, our license is for a 25-seat room. CERTL, it's a 100-seat room. So, we can do potentially quite large events. Some of the other events, go back up under the cafe, menu, just so I can see the drop-down menu, that we're doing right now, um, we have what are called CERTL casts, which are online workshops that are run by various speakers in the CERTL network. Right now they're generally being driven by the requests of grad students or such around the network. Um, we have a coffee hour, the idea of which went away. Um, I'll go back. Um, coffee hours, which are meant to be more informal, so bring in people, let them discuss things in a very open format, not really a centered presentation, usually around a particular topic. The next coffee hour was going to be on being a faculty member at different types of institutions. Um, and, well, no, that was the last one. The next one is on teaching as research projects around the network that three people would have no already idea. done. 